uh, from uh, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and the Kids First Project. And uh, let me see. And okay. so I will go to a little more details for uh, the RCWL and RCWL pipelines usage on some of these um, platforms. So um, with all these advantages of using workflow languages, <clears throat> there are some intrinsic challenges. First, uh, the workflow language is um, a command line tool itself. So there's a steep learning curve for researchers, even for skilled data analysts. And also the workflow language uh, mainly deal with the command line tools that are involved in the pre-processing steps. So it has a poor integration with the downstream statistical analysis tools, such as RM Bioconductor. So this can cause some reproducibility issues from the modeling step. So these two packages are developed, are designed to connect the pre-processing steps and modeling steps and provide um, reproducible and standardized data analysis tools and pipelines uh, in R and Bell Conductor. First, we choose one of the most popularly used workflow language called CWL and write a robust and scalable R Bell Conductor interface for for it, and based on that, <coughs> we have developed our style pipelines to use as a catalog, a set of commonly used and emerging bioinformatics tools into the reproducible CW pipelines that are available in R. So currently, we have uh, 200, 214 tools and pipelines together. Uh, so this figure shows the basic usage of these two packages. <clears throat> and the color blocks are the function names. Basically, a uh, user starts from the RSW pipelines. First, they need to search a specific tool or pipeline that of interest, and then load them into our, our programming environments um, to be used. And one can also uh, write their own set of tools using RSW package, uh, build a tool or build a pipeline, and uh, <clears throat> all this and contribute to the RSW pipelines and to benefit the other researchers. And these existing um, pipelines and tools are customizable with some uh, utility functions, which I will show you in the lab demo later. So they are uh, easy to customize by changing uh, like a Docker version for a specific uh, software for changing the arguments for a specific tool. And then uh, after that, we are ready to uh, run the tool or pipeline uh, within our environment, um, which combines the both the pre-processing tools and also the um, data analysis tools um, using our functions. So here I will show you uh, some comparisons of using different ways of doing the data analysis. First, the, the traditional way of uh, using um, a batch, writing batch scripts using the command line tools in command, uh, command line interface writing up batch scripts. So the first step you need to search and download the software and uh, <clears throat> compile it uh, based on your computing environment. So there can be issues coming from the software dependency and the conflicts, and uh, you need to check frequently for the software updates. So second step, you will write uh, on-premise batch scripts where you uh, <clears throat> define, where you use a sp uh, specific tools and define inputs and outputs between uh, different steps. So there can be reproducibility issues. For example, um, <clears throat> you need to check carefully the, for the software tool versions uh, because different versions can lead to different results. And also the uh, inputs and outputs between tools are hard coded into your scripts. So which can also cause some um, uh, issues, right? And uh, also is relatively time consuming because you need to wait for one step to finish and then manually start the next step. If you work on a, a high performance computing, you also need to write some uh, scripts, uh, write some scripts in your um, 
data analysis to um, for the work workload management configuration, such as different job scheduled systems, uh, and this has to be uh, written repeatedly, which is quite inefficient. So <clears throat> the common workflow language so as one of the workflow languages address these challenges. First, <clears throat> first uh, they used, uh, as I said, they used the Docker uh, to track the specific uh, version of the software and uh, they connect all the tools together so that um, your data analysis pipeline is more automated and, uh, and um, streamlined. Uh, if when you use the CWL, as I said, it is a command line uh, language uh, itself. So first you need to write a CWL script. Uh, here I'm using the star index as an example. Uh, you need to write the CWL scripts following all the uh, configurations first. You need you're using star. The software tool is called star. And in the requirements section, you need to specify the Docker image uh, of the version um, that you are using in your pipeline here. And also you need to specify all the inputs that are involved in this uh, tool or pipeline. Here we have one, two, three, four. We have four, four uh, arguments that you need to um, wrap into this tool. Here the genome director, uh, we specify the prefix if you are using it in the command line need to specify like the, the other grammars, like how to separate the the arguments and the values and the default values for some of the arguments. Some don't have the default value, so you need to define each of them. Uh, like following, so you need to specify the output using a similar way. And the second step, you need to write an input file. Uh, here, the star index.yaml, it can be YAML, it can be JSON, uh, where you assign values like file path or a string. Uh, for our, our directory name for the input parameters like defined over here. So the third step, you will need a CWL runner to submit a job. So this involves the, the software downloading and installation, uh, like uh, one of the CWL runner that um, you're more um, familiar with, it could be CWL tools or other runners. And uh, then you run the a tool, CWL tool here, and by uh, in the command line to uh, uh, by specifying the two uh, the files, the CWL file and the YAML file, which will produce uh, results for the whole pipeline. So this is a very good tool, but it's as we can see uh, requires a lot of uh, work, efforts, and skills. Um, it's a steep learning curve, and here I will show you how to use the RCWL to do the same data analysis. Here we, the, the example is to use the uh, star <coughs> software to index uh, to index the uh, uh, single cell RNA-seq data. So the first step, uh, the first step, you just uh, uh, install the the bioconductor package as you. Uh, as you use other pack, pack packages, you just uh, use BASI Manager to install the package and elaborate it, uh, load it into the R session. And you, if the first time you use or has been uh, sometimes since your last use, you need to update, uh, use the CWL update function to update, uh, to sync all the existing tools since uh, they have been constantly I, uh, adding into our RSWL pipelines repository. So basically, uh, you just people will start from a CWL search using multiple keywords to search a specific tool if it is included. If you ask me now, uh, uh, you may ask me now that if you have this tool or that tool, you can actually use this function to search using any keywords. So it returns a list. So it's a CWL hub, but uh, including the title of the the tools or pipelines that are, have been included in our repository. So the PL represents pipeline and TL prefix represents the tool. So here we use the CWL load function to load the tool star index. And once it is loaded into R, it's ready to be used. And now uh, we need to check out input arguments 
like what uh, what values do we need to uh, assign to this tool to 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 run the data uh, to run the data analysis? So we can see there are four arguments and two have uh, default values, the run thread and has default value of four and genome directory name is def by default star index. So we only need to assign values for these two, the middle two uh, parameters. Here I have um, show some demo code here. Once you set, uh, assign the values, so the star index is now like a combination of the CWL file and the YAML file. So you can use the run CWL function to submit this, submit this job and the specified output directory where all the output will be saved. Uh, so it is internally submitted as a CWL script shown as shown in the previous page. So and it also supports parallel computing by using the run CWL batch function. And it supports different Docker systems uh, in your uh, in your high performance, high performance computing. Uh, okay, so next I will show you how to use uh, as a developer. If you don't find any tools included in our SWL pipelines, you can actually write your own set of tools. So here I will show you how to uh, write your own set of tools as a developer. So it's quite simple. Uh, here I'm using the star solo as an example. So this is a tool you want to wrap. First, you need to specify uh, the inputs. So there are two inputs. You need to specify them as the input parameters, and there are two outputs you want. You want the you want this tool to output. You need to define them as the output um, output parameters, and then you need to define the command line tool or our our, our package. Um, so this is a command line tool, but it can also wrap an R package or function, and then you can have a CWL tool in R. So this is a tool. You can also define a pipeline. Here I'm using the star solo, which is a command line tool for, do, uh, for doing the alignment for the single cell RNA sequencing data and droplet utils, which can be used to uh, read the, the output of the star solo into R as a single cell experiment. And it also has functionality to, to do some uh, further filtering. <coughs> so uh, once these tools are uh, if defined as the first step, you need to connect them into a workflow. So first you need to define the inputs for the whole workflow, not for a specific tool, but for the whole workflow and also the outputs for the whole uh, workflow. So the outputs can be from uh, different steps. And then you define the tool as, uh, define each of the two as a workflow step, and then you have, you have a step by workflow in R. So we have some basic functions where we can define the input, output, and a uh, uh, tool and a workflow and the workflow step. We have some advanced functions to uh, change uh, for the customization of your uh, of your tools uh, next time when you use them with different settings. Here I show some demo code, uh, like pseudo code for how to wrap the wrap the tools. I will show you in more details in the in the lab demo uh, in the end of the slides. So first you define the input parameters to define two inputs, use output parameters to define outputs, and uh, specify the Docker image here, <coughs> and then you use the step up process to wrap the, uh, the star tool and uh, by specifying all those arguments. To build a um, workflow, you specify the input parameters for the workflow, Output parameters for the workflow can be from different steps, and then you use step that workflow to uh, wrap it and specify each tool as the step that step, and then use the plus sign to connect them as a workflow. And then you can execute the pipelines within R and by assigning values to the input parameters, and you can use run CWL if you are using your local computer, and you can use run CWL batch. Um, to run it in parallel. So the take home message, the CWL, uh, the RCWL and RCWL pipelines provide a CWL uh, workflow with user-friendly R programming environment. And it uses Docker, which is trackable and reusable. And uh, <clears throat> uh, they, they are compatible with common job schedulers, 
such as SGE, SLARN, and So we have uh, more than 200 pre-built tools and pipelines which are open source and open development. And we are, we hope you can contribute and benefit the, the research community uh, by write, wrapping your own tool and contribute to the RCW pipelines repository. So we have uh, successfully used and applied RSW on the cloud. Uh, we have this package called RSW Cloud, which builds a bridge between RSW and RSW pipelines and cloud computing platforms such as CDC and Kvatica. Uh, so uh, we have done some high throughput DNA RNA data analysis on, on the NCI CGC platform. And we have also made uh, this um, CW workflow for RMS Turbo on the Kvatica platform, collaborate Thing with Dr. Xing. And we have also uh, for Anvil, it's, uh, it doesn't have uh, native support for the CWL, but for only for Vido. Um, but we can use our CWL to take advantage of this platform uh, using the Jupyter Notebook. So we can submit uh, CWL scripts in the format of uh, our CWL tools. So I will go to the lab demo. And uh, here is my contact information. I think I, I will share my um, slides later. So for the lab demo, you can find it uh, on GitHub. So under our workflow, 2022 underscore RSW underscore demo. So uh, it's under the vignette and the demo rsw.rmd. So I will show you my terminal. <coughs> so if the font, can you see it clear? Should I uh, zoom in or? I hope I, I hope it's okay to see. So I will start uh, showing you how to use them. Uh, we have about 15 minutes, right? Okay. So in this workshop, uh, uh, if you first demonstrate how to use the previous CWL tools and pipelines in R uh, using case study for single cell RNA sequencing data pre-processing. And then I will use some example code to demonstrate how to build our CWL tools or pipelines. And um, I have to be um, a bit more faster. So uh, in this case study, we use the uh, 10X genomics. Um, in this study, we will use the star solo for uh, the Count data align uh, the data alignment quantification and filtering, which produce a high quality count matrix from FASTQC, a uh, FASTQ file. And before the alignment, uh, we need to do a one-time indexing step using the star index. So it's also included here. <clears throat> so first, we need to install the packages using Belsy Manager, and uh, we need to load several of the, uh, use several of the other packages, the Gate to R, to download. Uh, the, the example data and the droplet you used for doing the uh, loading, uh, for doing the conversion of the data to um, single cell experiment objects in R and Belsi parallel uh, if needed <coughs> for the, running them parallelly. So first have you load these three packages here and I will show you uh, what data are we using. So uh, here we are using the real single cell sequencing data uh, from the 1K PBMC from 10X Genomics. <clears throat> so this set are subsampled from the source file to contain only 15 cells instead of uh, 1,000 so that each step can be done within one or two minutes. And also the data further created to only include reads on the chromosome 21. And uh, I will show you, so you can just uh, evaluate this code or get to R to clone the data set, and I will show you what data we have. Here we have the four FASTQ files over here, and we have one GTF file for the alignment, and we have the chromosome 21 and the, the barcode file over here. So, and um, we need to create an output directory. So I we use it as outdoor two and create the file to contain all the outputs. Three, uh, then we can proceed with the data preprocessing. 
So there are three core functions in uh, our CW pipelines, the CW update, CW search, and CW load. Uh, they will be needed for updating, searching, and loading the needed tools or pipelines into R. First, we use the CW update to sync all the tools. I don't think we need this. And we can see a list of the tools over here. So currently we have about like 214 of them uh, started with the PL or the pipelines and started with the TL or the tools. And we can see there are 45 pipelines and uh, 170 tools. I think I've just added one of each before this, <laughs> before this talk. And then we use the step up for a specific tool and pipeline here, we search the star and index. And we can see TLS and we can then use the CW load function to load it into our R session for the data analysis. So now we have the star index, which looks like this. So this is looks quite complicated. It's very similar to the CWL dot CWL file, right? And uh, it contains a lot of information. Actually, we can use some basic utility functions to return a specific. Uh, so we can use the specific function called impulse to see uh, what are the arguments that we need to assign values. And we can use the base command to see, okay, we are using the command line tool called star, and we can see the, the Docker pool. We can see the version of the the star is 2.7.10. <clears throat> and this can be changed, like how we customize our uh, the existing pre-built uh, pre tools. You can actually change the version of the star and by um, take advantage of all the other um, pre-built tools here. And uh, for the data pre-processing, let me run this step first because it will take about one minute and then come back for the explanation. Okay. <clears throat> so before the read alignment con and then we can equivalently index the genome doing the same thing using RSWL tool of star index within R, which was internally passed as the CWL scripts uh, by only assigning values to the input parameters and uh, execute the CWL scripts. So here I have assigned values for two of the, the parameters like I showed in the slides. So we need to assign like the file path for the genome FASTA files and SJDB GTF files for the indexing. And then we use the run CWL function to submit the job once uh, and specify the output directory. Here I'm using the star index and it's for output and uh, uh, Docker equals to true. So, uh, so the Docker arguments in the run CWL function takes four values. By default, it is true, uh, which automatically pulls the Docker images from the required command line tool, as we specified in the requirements. And also, it can be false if you already have pre-installed, like the star command line tool, and in your computer, so you don't really need to pull the Docker image. And it can also take singularity and the U Docker curve based on your uh, system configuration. Okay, now the job is done, and we can see the final process uh, status exercise because I have uh, used the show log to choose, so that's why uh, we see all the logs over here, which is can be easier uh, for debugging. And we can take a look at the output files. Okay, here are the out output files in the start index underscore output. Um, so these files are ready to be passed to the next RSWL tool called star solo. So then we use star solo to map and demultiplex and quantify the index single cell RNA seq data. Again, I view load the tool, assign values for the input, and run this first because it takes about, I would say, two minutes. <clears throat> so the steps are very similar. You just uh, search a tool 
and use multiple keywords, pair them using star and solo. And we can use the step that load to load it into uh, the, our uh, environment. And then here I'm just uh, specifying uh, some fast queue file path uh, and, and then pass them into the uh, parameters for the star solo uh, tool here. <clears throat> Once assigned values for the star solo, we can see uh, once the assigned values, so the star solo is now a combination of the .cwl file and the .yaml file. So it is ready to be submitted as a job as you do in the command line, just submit it. And it will be submitted internally as a CWL script. So different, uh, if you're, this is a tool, if you're using pipeline, so the tools will be run one by one uh, automatically. So uh, as it's running, let me take a look at. Let me take a look at the, the chat. Well done. Yeah. Um, there seems to be quite. There's a lot of activity in the chat. Um, I, I okay. think it'll be a lot. So one of the threads that's going on the chat is about different CWL and workflow languages okay. and resources for for those. So, for example, DocStore, NF Core, um, where you have Snakebait, Whittle, various different repos. And so the question is: Is there a common bioinformatics CWL? and CWL search so that you can actually search multiple repositories? Yes. Yes, we do have a, like, we do have a function called containers where we can search all the available, uh, available Docker images from the QE and uh, the Falcon, Falcon containers, right? So uh, you can then use that to space, to, 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 to use like any, to choose from the list. Uh, I actually, I have some code uh, in the demo later. So that you can see how, how you can search out the available dockers and um, choose one that you like most. Uh, so it will be a lit, uh, in the later part, but I will show you the, the results of our, our solo. So just show the directory and we have the, like the folder called solo.out and we can read one of the summary.csv file uh, from output. So which is very similar to the cell ranger summary and is useful for quality control. And uh, next step is to import count data and uh, <clears throat> into R. So as we have uh, finished the data proof processing, we maybe do some further data exploration in R environment interactively. So we can, uh, uh, we can use this tool called counts to SCE to convert it into the single cell experiment object. And we do search and load and let's see, take a look at the input. Okay, we only need a directory name for your uh, for your output files from the star solo and then specify it and we can submit this tool so that we can get um, the RDS file. Uh, in the single cell experiment um, format. So we can load it from the resource output. You can see the results. You can see the results output looks like this. So this is a file path and we can just uh, read it into R and we can have the single cell experiment. So this is by, uh, this function is by wrapping a bioconductor package called drop it utils, which I uh, use the function uh, 10x, let me see. Which uses the function called read 10x counts. <clears throat> so please note that the integration of uh, the R packages are specific, are only supported in RCWL, but not in the original format of RCWL. So this is a unique feature of RCWL. And uh, then I, instead of running the tool separately, because we have run the star solo, we have to run accounts to SCE separately, step by step. Uh, instead of that, we can alternatively use the pipeline called PL underscore star solo to SCE. 
to run the, the start solo and the counts to SD all together. So this is a pipeline. You don't need to um, run them step by step. So we do the search and load. And see the inputs for the whole pipeline. OK, the inputs argument names are a little different than the specific tool. And then we assign values for each of the arguments and then we can run the whole pipeline which combines the star solo and the droplet uh, and the counts to SC from uh, uh, from, from wrapping the bell conductor package droplet utils. So this will run the previous steps again uh, to generate all the results as we define and uh, I view I don't know maybe I'll just uh, pause this and show you the calls. So as you just ask, we tools or pipelines. So so that uh, we have the star solo, which is the stubby here can check the version and we can check the base command. We can check the requirements. Here it shows the Docker image from Qui, right? And we can also see uh, requirements of a, spe uh, a specific step from a from a pipeline. So this is the pipeline. The one step is the star solo. We can see the requirements here. And we can see the arguments, which are the hidden uh, arguments that are not included in, in our tool, which are uh, the default values. You can also make changes to these arguments. We can see the inputs as I have just showed you. So for example, we can change the Docker containers. Yeah, uh, the RSWL have this function called search container search container. So we can see there's a whole list of different versions, uh, different versions of the star and from different resources. You can see arcs search containers. So so there are two sources. One is the queen and the docker by default, so it will return a full list of all the available Docker's uh, for star. As we can see, there are different versions of star that we can use. So I'm using by default, all the preview tools are using the most updated version. So here we're using 2.7.10 or 9, sure. But yeah, uh, so we can make changes over here. Uh, I hope I have uh, answered your question. And then uh, I think I have a little bit more time uh, or you can, um, I'll show you how to use the RSWL as a developer to build RSWL tools. Uh, very simple examples. We need to uh, load the library and use the echo function. Like let's wrap the echo function as our uh, RSWL tool. Here we need to define the inputs for the echo. So after echo, you need to put the value there so that it can print out something, right? So the ID we define as something, and the tab is a string, and you wrap the echo tool where you use the style process, specify the base command as echo, and the inputs equals to input one. So now the echo is the R tool that you can use it within R. And let's assign some value for the echoes input parameter and then submit job and then we can see r1 r1 output and we can read out the output so uh, it's a standard output so we can read uh, use three lines to read output and then we can also wrap a batch script here we define very simple batch script uh, also doing i call hello something and then for the script we can uh Define the input parameter, same as the, the previous one example, and we need to require shell scripts for the uh, for this script we have just defined, and we define another tool called echo underscore b as a stable process where uses the base command as shell script and the requirements uh, we have defined and the input parameter. So this is an. <coughs> And then the echo B looks like this. So you can see 
the base command is bash script.sh. It's a command line tool, and the entry is script.sh, and here's the content of the script uh, where it defined something as the input. Our, fun our function as echo and define the input parameter, wrap a uh, W process, and assign some value for the, the input uh, parameter and run the job. And R3, you can see the R3 output. So after wrapping the R function, we can also do the same thing as um, wrap. We can wrap all of this into our tool to incorporate into your whole uh, pipeline as one step to your pipeline. <clears throat> so there are some extension materials that where you can submit parallel job uh, using the uh, based on BLC parallel, which uh, you need to define some batch uh, parameters and uh, use the Rust WL batch. I think this will be more commonly, more uh, usually used if you are doing a uh, big data than the rest uh, CWL. And you can check the output. Yeah, I think that's all the information. I'm, I'm sorry if I went too fast. And uh, I'll, I'll go back to my uh, slides to show my uh, contact information. So please uh, feel free to contact me using my email or other ways. And you're welcome to contribute your tools and pipelines. Thank you. Thank you so much. There's a lot of um, 